Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience Ultimate Comedy Movie Bracket Part 2 of the Whittle Down of the 2000 to 2009 Funniest Comedies. Not necessarily the best movies, the funniest comedies. We went through the very top end of the short list of the bracket. Today we're going to try to whittle the field down to oh, the top 70 or so. We have about 32 to 36 in already. We're going to try to fill in the back end of the bracket. Then eventually, after we do the 90s as well and create a super bracket of 64 versus 64 with the winners going head to head, then we're going to have a bracket and break all this down. I will be doing the bracket release show as well. That will be coming sometime in the future. If you're looking for part one, want to check out about all the really funny, most hilarious movies of the 2000s, then Hit the description of this video or podcast, and you can find the link to that right there. Pretty easy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's just one click. Boom. You can go catch up right away. Today, like I mentioned, we're going to break down the back end of these brackets, which movies are, you know, hilarious, but not like hilarious. What are, what are the 12 seeds? What are the 16 seeds? Who's in the play-in game for the bracket of the funniest movie of 2000 to 2009? However, I do have some giveaways. Do you like Bucks? Who doesn't? If you want to get into a draw for 100 DraftKings dollars, here's what you do. You share the show around. You share it on Facebook. You retweet it out. Doesn't matter where it is. Then you subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast. You leave a five-star review, DraftKings handle, and something you like about this show. Boom. You're in that draw for 100 DK bucks. You want to get into a draw for 20 DK dollars for the video at least? Here's what you do. You smash the like button, you leave your DraftKings handle in the comments section, and you tell me which movie that we're probably not going to talk about, so you can just do it at the very beginning of the show if you want to, that uh, deserves to be in the top 64 from 2000 to 2009 as most hilarious movie. Uh, maybe we've talked about it. Maybe it will come up, but if there's some like, obscure movie, and hey, it's just a pool of movies for people to go watch, so put in your favorite movie that no one knows about. How about that? You're in the draw for 20 DK bucks. Joining me, as he did in part one, live from his bunker in the midst of a quarantine. It is Gary and Thorne. What's up? Not too much. Just living that quarantine life. Uh, watching a lot of movies lately. Caught a couple from part one. Uh, in the meantime, between shooting these two episodes, so I feel like I'm just studying up. Ready to go here. And what we need to do today, too, because we originally started this at 32. We're going to go to 64. So we need to come up with region names. We had decided on the Will Ferrell region and the Judd Apatow region. So we need to add two more names into the region selection list. And to help us do that is the third member of the team. It is Tim Andagust. Tim Andagust. That is not my name. Are you ready to rename the regions? Turtle, turtle. Oh, God. Oh my god, did Master of Disguise come out in what year was that? I, I wasn't gonna say that's like ninety-eight or ninety-nine. No, I think it's like two thousand two. Really? Was, it was two thousand two. Like, there's some like really bad like that's not gonna make this list. Neither is that cr the Chris Catan feature, Corky Romano. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Do you remember the ad campaign? It's like who is Corky Romano? And then no I'm I mostly remember uh, Master of Disguise just because it seemed to play during the commercial break of every half inning of every Blue Jay game I watched in 2002. Um, so that one's really burned in the memory. But yeah, I hadn't thought of Corky Romano in a long time. That's uh, probably not something I needed to think about. Well, that, that is an example of uh, movies that will not make the top 64 bracket. Corky <laughs> Romano was released in 2001. There's like a 90s equivalent to that movie, and it's Clifford with Martin Short, which I saw as a group birthday party for myself when I was like 9 or 10. Uh, it wasn't funny then, and if you're not going to be funny to like a 9-year-old, uh, it's probably not going to be funny when you're in your mid-30s. That's at least my hot take on the matter. Uh, okay, so let's go through this. Uh, last time we left off for like the four sures going in, but let's go back to these regions for a second. Uh, I had made the case for the Ben Stiller region, and it does seem like now that he probably is the number three person from the 2000s, isn't he, Garen? Yeah, I would agree. Um, I would say what we might have to do now is either almost break up the Apatow region, or I, I guess we could you know, maybe make it a Seth Rogen region and a Judd Apatow region, or I don't know if he's, if that kind of covers all of that or how we want to go. But, uh, 
maybe we have to get a little bit more specific when it comes to like Apatow to find a fourth guy here. Uh, I'm okay with running that, that we can keep the Pharaoh, we can keep the Apatow, because those two, like we mentioned in part one, crossover a lot. Ben Stiller is a part of that world too, but he has his own standalone stuff, and we kind of broke down the fact that he had a really underrated 2000s when you really think about it, with a just series of good movies, at least hilarious movies. Tim, who would you put as the fourth person? Because I will throw Paul Rudd out as maybe the fourth most important person of this decade in terms of the most hilarious movies he was in. I was going to put all the dark comedies in its own region and give it the dark comedy region. Huh. Well, I mean, the, the movies don't really like just because just because there's a will f- just because there's a Will Ferrell region doesn't mean that Anchorman <laughs> is necessarily in it. It's just yeah, it's ceremonial more than anything. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, but I think the dark comedies are like the fourth major part of the 2000s, at least for me, when I think of funny movies in that era. So that's where I'm planting my flag. Yeah, I mean, you're right. There are a lot of really good dark comedies, and that's actually what we're going to get to mainly on this show is what actually fits into some of those uh, and which one should make the list. But the entire quadrant of that bracket is not going to be made up solely of dark comedies. No, but it's an homage to them. To their importance. Sure. I don't know. I, it doesn't have to be four actors or actresses. Like, I mean, Well, we have a director and a producer is one of them. But, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be individuals is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we, we kind of have a theme going here. Not to be a stickler. Um, yeah, I don't know. I get Paul Rudd definitely stands out. I'd say it's Rudd, Rogan, um, maybe Jason Siegel, but I don't think he has like the volume that those two have. Tina Fey? Uh, maybe, but it's really, aside from Mean Girls, what are we talking? We're not. That's basically yeah. That's basically it for her for the entire decade, isn't it? We're not. We're not throwing Baby Mama in there, or not, I can't remember. She, there, there were a couple terrible movies towards the uh, the end of this decade. Uh, it's funny, just staring at the list. I, I'm I'm t- I'm kind of towards the uh, bottom end of the list here, and I'm seeing both American Pies that came out this decade. And I know we've already talked about role models, Dark Horse candidate, Sean William Scott region. Well, I mean, when once we go through the most hilarious comedies of both the 90s and the 2000s, I think I'm just going to have to do the best movie of the all the 2000s, Southland Tales, and just do a best character from that movie bracket, because there's like 500 characters in that movie, with Sean William Scott playing two separate ones. So he's a, got a leg up. Fantastic. Not a real comedic role, just like his role in The Rundown with The Rock. Good movie. Oh, well, good good's probably stretching it entertaining to watch well, movie watchable movie yeah. watchable movie best of like those real generic the rock movies from the 2000s like faster maybe that's yeah really- those is, they're still making those the uh, san and or what was the one where the, the building was collapsing yeah but oh, those- uh, skyscraper skyscraper yeah, san intense. andreas rampage um, indistinguishable rampage. from every other movie no, no, yeah, but there was a low-level style rock movie back in this period, like Rampage, Skyscraper, San- I mean, San Andreas did huge box office. Like, those are, expen- yeah. those are expensive movies to make. For a while, like, when The Rock was remaking Walking Tall and stuff like that with Johnny Knoxville, they enjoyed pairing him up with a pseudo-comedian at some point. Like, those were real low-budget movies when he was first getting into movies. It was almost like... I mean, we'll talk about this on the 90s show, but like when Hogan started doing like Mr. Nanny and stuff like oh, that. Oh, then, the, yeah. then, then The Rock did, did he do the Tooth Fairy or Pacifier? One has Vin Diesel in it. No, Vin Diesel did the Pacifier. Rock did Tooth Fairy after he did Scorpion King, uh, which I believe was like the semi-sequel after he did The Mummy Returns. Um, oh, I remember. I, I, you don't have to act like you don't know. I remember all of this. Yeah, no, I think... Um, yeah, I think we, there's two regions of rock. There's like, like you said, you can either go by money where these budgets are like a hundred million dollars or it's like the rock is too big and it's so hilarious that they write him into a normal job version of the rock. Or there's, yeah, this version in this decade where he's still really big, but not like ridiculously big and could still be like a cop. And you're like, yeah, that makes sense. He's a kind of normal sized human being. So what we're looking at with Paul Rudd here, his his run during this decade, he's in like some bombs too, but Wet Hot American Summer, which I've already been on the record to say I don't like, but which will be in the bracket so everyone can vote for it and make me look stupid. Anchorman, he was in 40-Year-Old Virgin, obviously. Night at the Museum, The X, 
with, I believe that was the one that got renamed. It has like Zach Braff in it. No, wait. Uh, yeah, it has, is it Zach Braff and Jason Bateman? Yeah, Zach, Zach Braff and Jason Bateman. I, I think I saw that in theaters at the time. Wasn't very good. Then you have role models for getting Sarah Marshall. He's in Walk Hard. It's, it's a pretty good run. And then he finishes it off with I Love You, Man. Like, it's a lot of movies that are going to be on this list. That's true. And that was, I think that was the one movie we didn't really talk about in the first episode um, that we probably should bring up because I, I love I Love You Man. I think it's it's really an underrated one. I think it almost gets a little disparaged because it was sort of the tail end. It was like the last of, I don't know, 13 consecutive apatow type movies. And it kind of just gets buried, but uh, very funny movie. Yeah, I, I think it'll definitely make the top 64, but compared to Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Role Models, like it's just not as good. No, not in that class, no. But I, I, I do think it has to make the top 64. All right. Do you want to start with like the rest of the middling comedies from this era that we didn't get to? Or do you want to go straight to the dark comedies and the black comedies? Tim, the choice is yours. Let's do the middling ones first. Okay. So the middling movies of this time period. Um, let's start off with one which I think has aged very poorly, but everyone loved at the time. And it's, it's going to make the bracket, although I want to exclude it because I know people are going to vote for it not having seen it in 20 years and think it's still pretty hilarious, but it's Napoleon Dynamite. The thing yeah. is, it was funny at the time, and that matters. It was a huge hit, and the fact that it was a huge hit in the decade the movie came out is not only justification for it being in the bracket, justification for it going a couple of rounds. It like had a real social and societal impact. People were quoting that movie. People remember seeing that movie in theaters. Uh, you know, I think it's it's a quintessential 2000s movie. Doesn't age well. Haven't seen it since. Yeah, but this but, but, but this but this bra this, but this this bracket isn't about the most influential or best movies. It's about the funniest movies. And period. at the time, we all but, thought but it, it was, but it's, but it's not. But it's not funny. If you go back and watch it, it, it's it not funny. It was then. It isn't now. Yeah. So I, it's it'll make it. It'll be like a 13 seed. And I bet you it'll go around or two. You think it's going to knock off a four seed? Like if it's forgetting Sarah Marshall versus Napoleon Dynamite, you think that Napoleon Dynamite is going to win? No. In that case, it'll be like 52-48 forgetting Sarah Marshall. That's how strong I think its uh, pull is going to be because people have a fond place in their heart for that movie. They just do. To be fair, if we use Tim's poll math, 48% uh, is 38 more percent than you need to win a poll. So Napoleon <laughs> that is a needless cheap shot, and uh, I don't know why we had to go there. <laughs> All right. So did we go over what women want? Did we do that in the last episode? Yeah. We, did, we, we did. did talk about that. Yes. I couldn't believe that was a 2000s movie. No, it came out in 2000. So Yeah, I know. What about Little Nicky? I'm going to say no to Top 64. Ooh boy that's a bad movie yeah yeah it's look it, it had all the ingredients uh a 10 year old garyan could possibly want it had adam sandler on a hell of a run it had dan marino pleading with the devil to get a super bowl ring uh, it had popeye's chicken product placement really just checked every box and still it's not a movie that i can ever remember wanting to watch aside from the scene where they cover henry henry winkler and bees and that's that's like Rob Schneider's big line. That movie is like, you can do it. Cover Winkler with bees. That's about <laughs> the, it. I mean, there, there's a Rob Schneider run here, too, because he's in the animal. And like, but it gets bad for Sandler basically when Y2K hits. Maybe he was the biggest victim of all of that at the time. Maybe, maybe. Is, is he going to have a single movie make the 64 for this decade? I don't think so. Funny, funny people will probably get in. No, funny people's just not funny. <laughs> Like, Funny People is an example of a good movie that isn't hilarious. Like, this is the most hilarious movie, not the best movie. I Look, I think, again, I'll stand by the first 90 minutes of that movie. Like, the Yo Teach scenes are funny. Um, yeah, but, a lot of the yeah but we're not doing the best scenes of movies sure, either. But I, I, would, I would say, though, like, the first, the first half of that movie, when the characters are interacting, and it's not just Adam Sandler pining after his wife and Eric Bana, like, there's a large percentage of that movie that I find very funny. Um, I don't know. I could I could see half of a very funny movie being enough to make the top 64 here. If we're talking about that versus like, I don't know, Yes Man or Hitch, 
Like, I don't know. I feel anger like it's man- not- anger not- management could make the bracket too. If you wanted yeah. to talk about Adam yeah. Sandler movies. Yeah. So here are some Adam Sandler movies from the two thousands and maybe we'll pick one representative and the representative is probably 2002's Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds is probably his oh, yeah. funniest movie of this decade. I can get by Mr. Deeds. I liked anger management better, but fine. You liked anger management better. I like John Nicholson. I don't care. I think he's funny. So it goes little Nicky. He's in the animal. Then Punch Drunk Love, which is a not comedy. a comedy. Well, it, is, it is a comedy, <laughs> but it's not like hilariously funny. It's real dark. Mr. Deeds, Eight Crazy Nights, The Hot Chick, Anger Management, Fifty First Dates, Spanglish, mm-hmm. The Longest I like Yard. Spanglish. Eh, I like Dude, Spanglish, but it's not uh, not hilarious. It is not a good movie either. Deuce, eh. Bigelow, Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo with his uncredited cameo. Click which is a super like depressingly sad movie. yeah i get sad rain over me which is also not great uh Try, I, you know that movie tried to be sad and click is sadder than that movie inherently true but they thought that click was supposed to be really funny but it, yeah no it's 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 a real weird period in his in his career i now pronounce you chuck and larry <laughs> you, you don't mess with the zohan grown-ups <laughs> and funny people like it, it's They're, Mr. D is a the subset answer. of people who really stand for Zohan, and I just do not get it. I think you had to like grow up Jewish. I I think it's so many in jokes that I just don't understand. But there are there are stands for that movie, and I will never understand why. It, it's the uh, Dave Matthews Band of movies. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we give it to Deeds. Mr. Deeds is the answer to this. Yeah, I, I can get behind that. But I like Mr. Deeds a lot. And maybe we have room for anger management if we don't have enough movies, or maybe I don't know, Fifty First Dates. Like, mm. I, would, I feel like that funny a movie though. I think it's kind of like a nice movie. It's sweet, but I, I wouldn't say it's like gut bustingly hilarious. Okay, I want to make the case for Death to Smoochie to be on this list. Oh wow, that movie cracks me up every time I watch it. And I, and I say crack me up, I mean like hurts my sides. I'm laughing so hard at certain points. I think that movie is a gut buster. I know it didn't do very well in the box office. I don't know how many people have even seen it. That movie is hilarious. And I, uh, I will stand for that movie. That said, that, that movie just cracks me up. Hmm. Wow. I mean, if we, want, if, if we want to talk about dark comedies, I mean, that definitely qualifies. Very dark, but my goodness, everything from the little lines about how, you know, they said that uh, the, the boxer, listen, you don't go 48 and 15, uh, you know, 48 and 37 in your career and not have it lose a couple of brain cells. But just like little jokes like that are like hilarious on their own. Just ever. I don't know. Ed, Ed Norton is hilarious. Trying to be like Mr. Good. I mean, Robin Williams is a tour de force. Uh, even guys like Harvey Firestein are funny in that. Like everyone's hilarious in that movie. I'm sorry. I just. It's good I, cast. Love, I love the movie. You know what? If if I'm going to squeeze in Freddy Got Fingered into this list, then you can squeeze in Death to Smoochie. Well, yeah, but you don't have to fight me to put uh, Freddy Got Fingered in that. <laughs> I think that that, that could be the most obscure play-in game of all time. You might get like 75 votes on that poll. That is actually a very smart play-in game. We can put mine versus Tim's. Death to Smoochie versus Freddy Got Fingered. Although I'm happy if Freddy Got uh, Fingered wins. Uh, that won't bother me, but Death to Smoochie, oh my God, that movie's funny. Okay, please, so, people, go watch that movie before you vote. Yeah, I mean, this is what the whole point of this is for. It'll be fun to vote in the brackets, and we're going to rewatch these movies once the brackets come in. We'll do shows about that. But just putting, there are certain movies on here that just aren't on people's radars, which they should definitely go check out. Most of the most hilarious ones are in part one. But once we start talking about the actual like dark comedies that will be on this list, I mean, a lot of them are just underseen, wouldn't you say? Yes, definitely. So we're out on Little Nicky. Mr. Deeds is going to be the Sandler representative. Uh, that will be in the 64 for sure. How about Miss Congeniality, Gary? Funny movie. I think it has to go in there. I think Definitely. purely on rewatchability. I've probably seen that movie like 15 times. Um, 15? It's on t- it was on TV all the time. It was it, on TBS probably once a month. It's still on TV a lot. Yeah. I mean, look, people, Sandra Bullock's really funny in that movie. Uh, we got a great William Shatner performance in that movie. Candace Bergen, Virgin, Bergeron, something like that. I don't know. You just, you just call her Murphy Brown and we'll be good to go. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Uh, yeah. I, I think this thing she's in, in the last 30 years. What's that? It was the funniest thing she's ever been in is that Miss Congeniality, I mean, including Murphy Brown. 
Well, she, what are you going to say? She was in Mur the remake of Murphy Brown. That, that feels like right up your... That, that's like a wheelhouse Tim show. It, appe it, came, it, it appeared in the 80s and then came back. I, I figured you'd be all in on that. Was, Will and Grace coming back. Everything that came back, I feel like you'd be all in on. Somehow, Murphy Brown found a way to be less funny in to the 2010s than it was in the, in the 1990s because it was unfunny then. I mean, maybe we just take a side tangent right now. Out of all the shows that have come back to be remade that were previous existing shows, it feels like only one of them has been good, and it was Twin Peaks. Yeah, I'd have to actually think about that. Yeah, I mean, even what, what does development comeback mean? Has been pretty bad. Like, how long does the show have to be away for it to have come back, I wonder? I mean, if it was canceled at one point. Yeah, like, Arrested Development, I think, is a pretty good example. That was off for, what, like, 10 years? Because, like, no, so it was, it was off for, like, was like nine 15? years or eight years. What was Curb was off for like eight years. Was it really off for eight years? But it was never. Yeah, was but, like, it, but it had never stopped. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a more obscure. Like HBO and FX have weird filming schedules where you can take a couple years between seasons if you really want to. That was probably more of a Larry David decision than anything. Oh, duh, it was. It was. Yeah, it, that'd be like saying like Venture Brothers qualifies for that because they do one season every four years. But it's still it's not canceled. It's coming back. We just don't know when. Okay, yeah. I'm just I'm just asking what the rule for. That's all. All right, so I'm thinking like Twin Peaks. Murphy Brown, Will and Grace, help me out here. There's got to be other ones. Well, Roseanne was by far the most popular until she went crazy -er than she already was. I mean, that was the number one show on television before she went nuts. Yeah, but I'm not sure that had so much to do with the writing, though. Is it just did the content, Tim? No, but people also loved that show. So sure, back sure. in the '90s, Roseanne would have been number one. Yeah, but was it any? I, I guess it was able to continue sort of the same success that it had when it was on first run. But like Twin Correct. Peaks was just a totally different show. Yeah, like, they they did it right. I feel. You know, I have my criticisms of that season, but yes, I, I uh, now I have watched that season of Twin Peaks four times now, and it gets better every single time. I know. I still think it's David Lynch winking and nodding and making fun of his audience. But anyway. I would That's say that is that that is not a big David Lynch thing to do. David Lynch is not. He doesn't possess that same sort of trait that you do, Tim. Which is what? That you like to sneer at people all the oh, time. Oh, please. Of all that, the people that, on this show who sneer. Uh, it's, I, I'm in last place for that. I, that's what you do. David Lynch is just an artistic soul. He's bearing it all out at all times. Just like when you can watch him make quinoa on YouTube while he smokes cigarettes. He's just a genuine guy. <laughs> I mean, there are great moments of that. Season. This is not a Twin Peaks show, but there, there were absolutely phenomenal. One of the best moments in all of television in the last 10 years was the Long Lady's goodbye scene. I mean, that was better than anything Twin Peaks had done before or after, that emotional resonance. So I give it that. But, you know, there, there were parts of the plot that were deeply problematic. There was parts of the first run of the plot. It, David Lynch doesn't do plot, Tim. You know this. I am well aware. <laughs> His movies have nothing to do with plot. None of them. So, uh, oh, that was going to be a question for the 90s show. Do we include Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me as best comedies for some of the no. outrageous moments? Not so much no. of the real dark moments? No, I mean, that would be the same as adding Quantum of Solace to the 2000s because it's so laughably bad. I mean, it's not like a lie. It's not the worst Bond movie by far. Like it, Quantum, of Solace is better, Quantum of Solace is better than basically every one of the Brosnan movies. I don't think that that's true. It is. Like, Gary, what's a good Brosnan movie? Is it just Goldeneye? Which is, which is like, uh, okay. Tomorrow Never uh, Dies is also great. No, Tomorrow Never Dies is not good. Oh, I like that movie. Goldeneye is definitely the best. I, yeah. I wouldn't say those are even Bonds that I tend to rewatch. Um, so, yeah, I, I give Goldeneye. Funny enough, though, one movie I didn't see on your list, and you guys talking about uh, TV shows and TV shows that have movies, uh, I just double-checked to make sure this came out in this era. The Simpsons movie. Yeah, oh. Oh, shit. That's I, a solid movie. I don't think it, I think it was pretty good. I, I went in with very low expectations and came out not impressed, but it had almost seemed like they'd saved a lot of their jokes from the last couple seasons for the movie. It was it was pretty good. I saw it in the and this is coming from a pretty big Simpsons head, but I saw it in theaters and I legitimately don't remember anything besides Homer having a pig. <laughs> no, I don't I, I, I don't remember rocks. anything that happened in that movie. They put the dome over the city. Um, 
I remember Homer rides a motorcycle and has to throw a bomb out the top to save. I the want day. fifty tall guys and I want fifty short guys. <laughs> I want short guys next to the tall guys to make the tall guys look taller. You've gone mad with power. Have you ever tried to go mad without power? It's very unfulfilling. Do you want to? Should, should we include the Simpsons movie in this? Then I think it makes the top sixty-four. I think it makes the case. I mean, it can hit the cutting room floor if there's. I don't know. It seems like the more we go through this, like we're going to have to fight to get our 64 in here. Well, that's why we need to, we'll, we'll do a bit of a recap here at the end, but like where I just wrote it down, I picked a random spot on the page to write it down. It's now sandwiched in between ready to rumble with David Arquette and the ringer with Johnny Knoxville, Mm. which probably aren't going to make the list. No, look, it might, it might not make it, but it was just one of those like, Oh yeah, that did come out in 2007. I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, it, it probably doesn't have to make the 64, but I think it's on the fringe. All right. On the so, bubble. so, so little Nikki out. How about big mama's house? <laughs> One, two or eight or whatever came out. Oh man. Like Martin, I haven't watched that movie in two decades. It's weird. Cause like Martin Lawrence is hilarious, but he's not going to get anything on this. It feels like. When did blue streak come out? Oh, I like that. That's gotta be a nineties movie. Cause I love blue. Yeah. Street. I think it is a 90s movie. Yeah, Blue yeah, Streak was good. 1999. Okay. That that well, that will that will be that and nothing to lose will definitely be in the best of 19 the best of the 90s bracket. But okay. like what what's the best Black Knight with Martin Lawrence? Oh, right? Black Knight. Which as like a 16-year-old I saw twice in theaters. Uh is not good. He does wear like a Jets jersey back in time though, Tim. Yeah, there's uh, several movies like that that have Jets themes in them. Elf like, was another one like that. So Big Mama's House out. What women want I put in the 64. Uh, let's see. Napoleon Dynamite. That's going to be in on the previous show. We put in Jackass, Hot Rod, Clerks 2, uh, and Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. And we left out World's End. We're still good with that? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Okay. How about Legally Blonde? That makes the 64? Sure it does. Okay. Scary Movie 1 we have in. 2, 3, and 4 we're leaving out. God, yes. I like number 4. That's when the Zuckers took over. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know. Wait, which one was Sheen in three or did he pop up in four? First? I, I believe he's in number four. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I would, I would say if I had to rank them, it's like one, two, four, five, three, but yeah, it's it after one, they all kind of fall off a cliff. All right. We have Bruce almighty getting the yank. That's not going to make it. Uh, this one I think is definitely in the 64, if not a 32 it's school of rock. Yeah. It, it's sort of in the same realm as Almost Famous. Like, both of those movies... No, sort of, no, 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 no. Whoa! That is not, they're not in the call- same realm. Like, School of Rock is an overt comedy. Uh, Almost Famous yeah. is not. You don't think so? I think it's, no, a, no. it's a comedy. It's a drama. I mean, that'd be a really long comedy. It's hard to make a three-hour comedy. I don't know. I, 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 get, I think they're just both comedies where music is sort of like the central focus of the episode. Like it's, a, uh, it's a central conceit of the of the of the movie. No, one I would is, say almost famous is a much higher, even just in a regular sense, almost famous is a much higher caliber of movie than School of Rock. I like School of Rock just fine, um, but almost famous is like a great movie. School of Rock's pretty funny. Jack Black's great in it. Um, it's yeah, it, it's a Joan Cusack's really funny. Yeah, it, it is a funny movie. Almost famous isn't like a funny movie at all. <laughs> sure, it is. There's like two or three scenes that are comical, but they're usually like end up just being really sad scenes. Yeah, like Philip Seymour Hoffman's really funny, but he's only in like three minutes of the movie. Philip Seymour Hoffman's in comedies. I'm saying he's funny in that movie, but he's only in like three minutes. Okay, fair enough. It's, it's fine. You, okay. Almost Famous is not on this list. Johnny English. That's a comedy. In or out? Out. Out. All right. How about 13 going on 30, if not just for that thriller dance scene? <laughs> Uh, probably not going to make it. Although that is a movie that definitely has fans. Um, I'll put it, I'll put fringe next to it. I can say pretty who's, comfortable. Who's like the funny character in that movie though? Like Ruffalo? It's probably Jennifer Garner. Like it, it's not so much that she's funny, but she's in funny situations. Um, stuff, yeah, stuff, funny stuff happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I well, speaking of Philip Seymour Hoffman, the funniest part of this movie, uh, which is probably going to be out along came Polly. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, I don't think it's going to make it a right, couple well, funny scenes though. Okay. So we, I threw this to you guys in part one, but I hate this movie, but grandma's boy doesn't make the top 64. 
I didn't have it. No, I don't think so. People are going to be mad about that, which I'm glad about. I mean, that that could even again, just just in terms of like culty movies as as a uh, as a play in game, uh, that could be a consideration, I guess, if we can find something to pair it with that makes sense. But right. <laughs> Grandma's Boy versus Napoleon Dynamite might be funny. Well, well, I have Joe Dirt next on this list. We're not doing oh, that one. God, no. So we're going to go out on that hitch. I, I could make a case for hitch. I thought hitch was pretty funny. And yeah. like whatever happened to Eva Mendes? Yeah. Babe in that movie. I, yeah, I still think Hitch is one of those movies. It's like it's funny for a romantic comedy. Like it's funnier than your average romantic comedy. But I still think it's not like it, it's not a hilarious movie to me. But right. yeah, that's that's I, we can put it on the fringe. Yeah. I, it, it makes it. It makes it. I'll put it on the fringe because we need to designate some stuff. We don't end up getting to enough movies here. Uh, just I'll just give me a quick yes or no, and Tim will start with you when I say the name. All right, Devil Wears Prada. Yes. Gary, and you're after that. Sorry. Uh, yes. Okay, so yes, that's in the 64. The Breakup with Jennifer Anderson and Vince Vaughn. No. No. Out. The Girl Next Door, one of the most <laughs> underrated casts, like, to look in retrospect ever. Great cast. But no. No, it doesn't make it. All right, so out on Girl Next Door. Dane Cook vehicle, good luck, Chuck. No. <laughs> no. But that that is a good comparison to Napoleon Dynamite, by the way, Tim. If you want to say we all loved Agreed. Napoleon Dynamite at the time, like not this movie in particular, but Dane Cook. Yeah, Dane, well, Dane Cook was never really that funny to begin with, though. I, I didn't find him funny at the time. Uh, listen, as a freshman in college, I really thought that Dane Cook may have been the best stand up comedian alive. Two years later, be like, this wasn't funny at all. No, I don't. I, I'm sorry if we're sponsored by Dane Cook's cds or something but i i just don't find the man funny <laughs> that would be awesome if he actually sponsored his cds as a yeah, part of the show specifically the cds yeah. uh yes man with jim carrey no no i i found it funny but i think i was more just relieved that carrey had like a sort of funny movie for the first time in a decade i don't think it was actually that funny Or are you talking about, like, recently? Well, I just mean, like, it, it had been so long since he had anything that I'd even been remotely interested in watching. Uh, that one was at least viewable. Uh, but it's not something I'm, like, running to rewatch or anything like that. Okay. Uh, the David Arquette slash WCW movie, Ready to Rumble. No. I'm going to say no, although I've seen it, like, ten times. <laughs> that was also on TBS almost every weekend. Yeah, because Turner owned WCW. They yeah. own the movie. <laughs> but it always, it never aired in the primetime slots. It was always like, it's four in the morning. What do we have to fill three hours? Ready to rumble. It's like, oh, look, there's Oliver Platt. He is the king. <laughs> really terrible movie. Uh, the Ringer with Johnny Knoxville. I think we're going to be out on that. How about, yeah, I'm how, out. How about Gary and for you, Shallow Hal. No, I'm out too. Did did like I didn't not enjoy it when I watched it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Gwyneth Paltrow just doesn't scream funny to me anymore. Austin Powers in Gold Member. No. no, 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 no. I don't like it either, but it seems weird. I mean, both one and two will be a part of the '90s list. I'm yeah, sure. definitely. Yeah. Bridget, Bridget Jones's Diary. Yeah, that has to make it. Ah, uh, yeah, I've. Not my demographic. No, me either, but I know that it's. I would it assume, be yes. Okay. Uh, my big fat Greek wedding. That this definitely has to be one. there. That definitely has so, to be there. So, yeah. So, that's going to be in. 50 first dates. Did we decide on this? Yes or no? I voted no. Yeah, I think it, I think we can just be with Mr. Deeds and that's fine. Okay. I wrote up. Should up be on this list? That was it's a really huge. Not funny, I would say. It, yeah. it was a, definitely a comedy. Again, hilarious movies, make... Tim. You're really missing the parameters of all of this. Just because people liked it and it made a lot of money doesn't mean it's necessarily hilarious. Well, okay, You're saying people liked it and it was a comedy, but all right, fine. I don't think there's a single Pixar movie that would define itself as a comedy, though. Like, they don't really make comedies. They make, car they make animation films that happen to be funny at points, but I, I wouldn't say they're comedies. I would say that the funniest Pixar movie, unless I'm forgetting something really obvious is probably the original Shrek. Like that is funny. 
Was that Pixar? I thought that was DreamWorks. No, maybe then, then, then you're right. Then Pixar doesn't do yeah. it. But Shrek is the only one of those movies that's written like a comedy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was Finding Nemo was definitely written as a comedy. It was just not that funny. Fair enough. I'm just saying it is written as a comedy. So okay. was The Incredibles. Yeah, the, but The Incredibles is like just a better action movie than like a funny movie. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Josh Hartnett's 40 Days and 40 Nights. That's the one yeah. where he, he has to give up sex for 40 days in 40 nights. <laughs> uh, gonna go with a no on that one. Okay. Showtime with Eddie Murphy. And, uh, oh, not who Robert, Robert De Niro's in that too, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what a cast. And Rene Russo. I owned that DVD. I don't know why. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's very unfunny. Oh yeah, I know. It's terrible. I just say, I, it's, I specifically remember owning that DVD and I, I have no idea why. Okay. Dude, where's my car? This is something I, I had it uh, down here on the list. Paul Shaughnessy behind the camera, big advocate for dude, where's my car? Zoltan. It definitely has a case. It definitely has a case. <laughs> well, okay. So I think this, this gets into the territory where maybe it's not quite at this level. Okay. And, and is, is, this. is this the, is it dude, where's my car versus grandma's boy is the play in game. Okay, maybe that's the playing game, but I guess the point, and maybe you were saving this, I don't want to step, bury the lead or anything, but where do we stand on movies that are intentionally trying to be funny versus movies that happen to be funny because they're so, so poorly made? Well, I have, we're starting I, to get to that place. I, I have two that I've identified yeah. on that, and we'll have a discussion. And I think one of them might have to make it just because of what it means in the comedy community. Sure. I mean, I, I'm all in on it, but we'll, we'll get yeah. to that in a second. I'm, I'm yeah. almost through all of like the regular ones here. Uh, so do where's my car potential play in or it's in the 64 daddy daycare, which no. under quarantine, I, I feel like is just a fake news movie. It's not as fun as they make it out to be just taking care of your kid all fucking day. <laughs> Pass. Uh, love actually. Yeah, I think that definitely has a case just for Bill. I think I? it should be in. The, I think it should be in there. I'll throw it in the 64, Gary. Yeah, sure. Okay. Not the funniest movie in the world to me, but I can I can see the case. Feel like Harold and Kumar is a definite in. Yeah, yes. that's in. How about Rush Hour 2? Pass. Which one was Rush Hour? Is that the one where they go to China? Isn't Hong there like, Kong. Isn't, isn't there like four Rush Hours? So there's, there's the first one in Los Angeles, and then I think this one, they go abroad. And I think there was a third one, but I, I couldn't even begin to tell you what the plot of that movie is. Yeah, Rush Hour 2 is the one where they go to Hong Kong. Is that, okay. the, one, is that the one where Chris Tucker does the Michael Jackson karaoke song with all the gangsters around? I don't remember. He gets remember. all the ladies up on stage with that's a great scene. I don't remember. I remember there's that's the one it's the one where there's like they're in the massage parlor, like quote unquote massage parlor, and uh there's a fight scene that breaks out in there. Yeah, I, don't, like, I, I, I definitely saw that movie in theaters. I, I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you if it was funny or not. Uh, I recall it being very funny. I probably haven't seen it in 20 years, but that's where we're at with some of the stuff. What about stuff. that Larry David movie you loved? Whatever works. Oh, that, that was a Woodsy Allen movie. You loved that movie. It just has, I just like Larry David. Anything Larry David's in it. That wasn't even really a funny movie. That was terrible. <laughs> Uh, David Mamet's State in Maine, another Philip Seymour Hoffman jam. Meh. Yeah, gets an eh. I'll I'll, a, I'll admit, I have not seen this movie. I'll put it on the fringe. How about Accepted with Justin Long? I like Accepted. I'm not sure if it's funny enough to make this bracket, but I, I do like Accepted. Do you like Accepted more or less than you like the movie Waiting with Ryan Reynolds? Because I feel like they're like kind of the that's, same that's That's a very interesting... I would say I prefer Accepted. I like Waiting better. Tim, have you seen either of these movies? I saw Accepted. It's all right. I think they're both on the fringe. Okay. Kung, Kung, Kung Fu Hustle. Which one was this? Uh, it was, I don't want to say it's a Hong Kong movie. It may have been a Chinese movie. Um, I remember see, it was, it's really weird if you want to go check it out. Maybe it's not for okay. this list. Defi definitely a watch movie though. Okay. All right, so we're going to leave that out. Ocean's Eleven, in or out? I mean, it's not good. So, uh, and it's certainly not hilarious. The first Ocean's Eleven, the original from the 60s, it's a great movie. 
These I movies doubt, are I, all bad. I, really I doubt cool. that very much. It As someone really- who has watched uh, all of the the Rat Pack act, I can assure you that it probably wasn't a very good movie. Yeah, well, o- and Ocean's still, Eleven, a hilarious movie, the remake. Um, I, 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 I would, terrible. I would most. Uh, you think it's terrible? Uh, I hate the movies. I hate that whole uh, that that whole uh, enterprise, that whole Ocean's Eleven, Twelve, Thirteen. I didn't like any of those movies. What a horrific. I will say, just in quarantine, playing a lot of cards lately. Uh, one line that has come up a lot. All red. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize it was that ingrained into my head. But guys, guys, all red. Great line. Oh, th- this can go back to movies that were made into TV shows eventually. High Fidelity. That just came back on like Hulu or something. Yeah. Would you put the movie in the top 64? I think I would. Yeah, I think so. I don't think I saw it. That's like the start of Jack Black's career, isn't it? It's the first thing. Now, he was in uh, Cable Guy. Oh, that's true. He was. He was the guy that Jim Carrey dunked on at the gym. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the two movies that we should figure out if we want to include them into this bracket or not. Number one, The Happening with Mark Wahlberg. I'm going to say no, because I think we only have room for one of these, and I don't want it to be this one. And I and I just think, yes, this movie is hilariously bad, um, but I it, it's not so hilariously bad that I feel the need to watch it constantly. I think it's just like bad, bad. What about that scene where they're in the house with the woman, like the old lady, and she starts accusing him? He's like, no, not what happened. <laughs> okay, so, sorry. So yeah, it's very funny. Okay, so Tim, should we include the room on this list? Because I say yes. Yes, because despite what people think, I think that movie was made to be terrible. So Oh, I, yes, don't be I a do Tommy Wiseau truther. I believe with all my soul that it, again, it's all a con job that, again, you're just being winked at. Uh, yeah. and, if like, and, and if you're smart enough to figure it out, you can follow along that you're supposed to laugh along with him. You think uh, he pulled off like a two decade long con for a movie con, with his I name all over it. it? I think people who saw it at the time realized this was intentionally bad uh, and, and brilliant uh, because of it. No, um, all, no, there is no way you could possibly... Because people try this all the time to make quote unquote bad movies that are funny and it just doesn't work. It, there has to be something genuine about it. And this is genuinely bad and it makes it hilarious. I think what makes it so hilarious is that it's the one in a million. It's no. the producers, but in real life. You're right. It's one in a million, but it it, it did not intend to be funny. It, it definitely did not. And it 100% has to make this list. It does have to make the list for sure. So the room is definitely in. And the happening is going to be out. That's how we're going to instruct this. All right, dark comedies. You ready? Sure. Because I feel like this is where all of our favorite movies from here go, but sorting out what's hilarious and what's not is a bit trickier. In the Wes Anderson tier, we have Royal Tenenbaums and Life Aquatic is probably the two funniest movies that he made. I would say Life Aquatic is probably out, and Tenenbaums is in. Tenenbaums is definitely better. It's definitely in. Yeah, Tenenbaums is in. Again, Tim, not better. It's, it's what makes it better is that it's significantly more hilarious. Okay. In Bruges, that's a definite in for me. Yep. Mm-hmm. Someone definitely. actually tweeted at me like yesterday that they hate In Bruges, couldn't even make it through half of the movie, which blows my mind. I can understand maybe not finding it as funny as like a different person, but how could you dislike that movie? <laughs> I, I don't know. Like it's genuinely... When, when we start doing, like, the bracket, and if I just made my picks for all of it, it would probably end up inside the f- top 10, top 8, like the elite 8 of this. Yeah, game. but you could be very pro-phone and then find Ray Fine's abuse of telephones to be very hurtful. But the guy, <laughs> but, but the guy never made it to that point of the movie. <laughs> that, that may be so. <laughs> like, like, again, like, the Ray Fine's turn in this movie, and, like, this is, you know, he was in the English patient in Schindler's List. This is definitely his best performance. I don't know if it's his best performance. I'm it not going to say that. No, it but I think he's is. fantastic in it. Just like Colin Farrell, like you'd be hard pressed to find a better Colin Farrell performance. Maybe okay, but I think that's that, that. I don't think Colin Farrell is nearly as good of an actor. Ooh, I mean, Colin Farrell's been in a lot of good stuff. He was the bad guy in the original. Oh yeah, he was in Alexander. What a great movie that was. So Seven Psychopaths is pretty funny. So, so I'm gonna say, if you're in a bad movie once, you're not a good actor, is what you're saying. 
I didn't say that. So you uh, said sh- should we go through the Ray Fiennes catalog then to see if he's a good actor or not? If he was ever in a bad movie? Uh, he has been in bad movies, but Ray so, Fiennes so he, has so been, he sucks. Ray Fiennes has been in more bad movies. Or sorry, uh, Colin Farrell has been in more bad movies. That's my point. Has he been in more bad movies, though? Because it feels like the only movies that you're remembering are the good Ray Fiennes movies. Well, at least there were a few of them. Like, Colin Farrell was in SWAT with LL Cool J. Like, what's wrong with you? I didn't see that movie. Ah, oh, see, so you have no idea. And The Lobster is just excellent. People should definitely yeah, watch The Lobster. Lobster was great. Seven Psychopaths was really good. He's, he's, he's had a nice little... I, I guess uh, season two of True yeah. Detective kind of took the wheels off for a little bit, but whatever. He had a good cameo in Scrubs. I really like that movie Phone Booth. Oh, Phone Booth with Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah. I think it was shot yeah. like... 13 days or something start to finish yeah, I, it wouldn't I shock me it was I, very I there was not, not a lot of coverage in that movie yeah and i remember from him from like hearts war i remember him from tigerland like the late 90s which is an awesome war movie mm-hmm. an underrated like war movie that no one's ever seen but anyway so i say that is most definitely in we're gonna go bad santa most definitely in that's it yes yep now that's a coen brothers script we could almost do so. Here are the Coen Brothers movies that I put on this list: Bad Santa, if you include that; Oh Brother, Where Art Thou; Burn After Reading; Intolerable Cruelty; and The Lady Killers. I would say I think Oh Brother is the fun. Not not including Bad Santa, I think Oh Brother is the funniest movie in that group. I agree. I don't know if I would include the other ones, Tim. It, oh Brother has some crazy memorable lines. Yeah, I mean it's. It's certainly easier to adapt a story than write an original one, but nevertheless, it is hilarious. So are you saying that adapted movies shouldn't be a part of this? What are you I talking about? Say, I didn't say that. I'm just I, saying I, I, that. I don't understand what the point is of, the, of that comment. Like, what, what are you getting at? Like, I think Burn After Reading is a better job and a funnier movie. I can, I mean, if you think it's funnier, then you think it's funnier. That's that's the point. I would disagree. And I think it's harder to write that movie than oh, Brother Where Art Thou. So, so, there's, so there's a degree of difficulty with these movies. So if I cast bad actors in my movie and you still find it marginally funny, that is a higher success than me casting Will Ferrell in something because that's too easy because he's in it? I didn't say too easy. I'm saying I like... Burn after reading better because I think it's funnier and I think it's a harder movie to write and it still happens to be funnier. You could just say you think it's a funnier movie. That's the point of this. There's no such thing as a degree of difficulty when it comes down to it. But if I'm trying to make the case for one movie, I gotta take a shot at another if I don't want it to make the bracket instead. I mean, we, we can we, include... We might have room for yeah, both. We, we can say that they're Maybe. both in. That works for me. Maybe. Jerry, but if, you, if there can only be one, there, there, <laughs> I want Burn After Reading. Gary, would you? We're gonna put in "Oh Brother, Where Art Thou." We both agree yeah. on that. Should we also put in yeah. "Burn After Reading"? I don't think it has to go in, but um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's not a funny movie. Um, I'll, I'll put it on the fringe, and I'll get rid yeah. of "Lady Killers" and "Intolerable Cruelty." That sound good? Yeah, I like yeah. that. Idiocracy. Yes. 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 Because right. the thing about Idiocracy, among this list, even, and this is kind of like the staple of Mike Judge is obviously there's the dark, hilarious undertones, but you don't even really have to understand that much of the movie and what it's trying to say and still just kind of find it funny. Like there's some outlandish, big performances in it. So I think it hits at a couple different levels. I, I'm perfectly in with that. And it's a movie almost like Office Space that has just gotten better over time. Yeah. And the, I mean, the cast continues to get better and better, or at least look like just better casting year after year after year. So we got... Luke Wilson, Maya Rudolph, Dak Shepard, Terry Crews, David Herman. Who else is in that movie? I'm trying to think. Or is that all of them? I think that's the, I think those are the most of the main characters. I think that works for me. Yeah, I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head. Uh, so that's it. The root probably pops up somewhere, if uh, I had to guess. At, per executive decision, I don't care who agrees or disagrees with me, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is going in the top 64. Sure, I don't think it'll get out of the first round because people haven't seen it, but it definitely should be in the It is hilarious. If you take it, any anything away from this show is just go watch Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah, it's a really good movie. It has its problems, but it is a really good movie. I mean, I, I feel like it has no problems. It's almost a perfect movie. I know you think that, but I don't think that. Yeah, but I mean, you've just you just said like Ocean's Eleven isn't good. So like, I don't you, think that's a good who, movie. Who, who's I'm sorry, listening I'm not to you at this point? Into thinking that. Garyon? 
Yeah, I'm fine with Kiss Kiss being in there. Oh, yeah, it definitely has to be in Sorry, I just, I, I remembered Val Kilmer and I looked up whether or not MacGruber was a 2009 movie or 2010 movie. It's 2010, isn't it? It's 2010, yeah. Yeah, it, it just missed the list. Uh, young adult, I would say yes, but I think it's fringy at best. I have not seen that movie. Yeah, either. remind me, who's, who's in this movie? It's Charlize. Oh, that movie, sure. I haven't seen it. I do now remember. Oh, you like, know what? I, I actually, it, for whatever reason, it came out in 2011. It is not a part of this. Oh, list. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Go watch Young Adult, too. It's the uh, it's a Jason Reitman movie. It's pretty funny. It's a uh, very adult themed. The Informant with Matt Damon. No. Nah. All right. That's out. Zombieland. I like Zombieland. I think it's a better movie than it is funny, though. Yeah, I, I guess there's that case. Um, it's nice and quick, though. Like, I, I think maybe if we're thinking like laughs per minute, it clocks in at like 82 minutes or something like that. Like you get in, you laugh a bunch, you get out. I, I, I think it deserves to be in the top 64. I remember seeing this in theaters and oh, I did not like this movie. That's right. This is the one with Woody Harrelson. You don't like Woody Harrelson? I didn't say that. I just didn't like this movie. I remember seeing it now. No, oh, I, I like Zombieland. I think that's a fringy movie, though, in terms of like most hilarious. Because we'll get to Tim. You, you can make your case. I like I Heart Huckabees, but I can see it not <laughs> making this. What list. a great movie that is! Oh my god, that's hilarious. I don't know what else to say. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's. It's certainly not for everybody. It's not a knee slapper in the traditional way, but uh, it is very, very intelligent and. Uh, I think the Huckabees Corporation is up to some pretty funny stuff. Gary, have you seen I Heart Huckabees? I haven't, actually. Oh, uh, what a great movie. Well, I'll, I'll knock it out today or tomorrow. I got nothing but time to kill, so it, I'll, 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 I'll get back to this. The, the, he had loaded with stars, too. For yeah, a movie it, that didn't do that well, loaded with stars. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a... I think this was David O. Russell's follow-up to Three Kings, if I remember that correctly in the timeline. Yeah, there's a lot of big people in it. Oh, but, yeah, Wahlberg's in this movie, right? Yeah, Wahlberg, Naomi Watts, Jude Law... Yeah. Um, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman and Lily Tomlin play existential detectives. Jason Schwartzman. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I do know the movie. And, and there is a weird Pete Sampras plot line that just kind of goes all throughout the movie for no reason. Sure. That doesn't date the movie at all. No. Uh, so I'll put that I'll put that in for the moment. We might have more than 64 at this point. Uh, Snatch. I think Snatch gets in. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, it's... It's again, it's a comedy that's not a comedy. Correct. But it happens to be funny constantly throughout. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree of all of like the more serious type movies or action movies or whatever you want to quantify it as that Snatch is funnier than most. Like funny. Yeah, it's just a Sna film. Snatch is funnier than Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, for example, a movie that's oh, also definitely. kind of funny and in the same vein. But I think Snatch is funnier. Yeah, it's, it's like it's similar to Thank You for Smoking, which I think is also a 2000s movie, but it's not as funny as uh, as a snatch. I would actually go the other way with that. Thank You for Smoking is way funnier. Well, it's way funnier. And, 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 that is, and that is the last one on this list is Thank You for Smoking, which is a definite in for me. Sure. But I, you know, if it were up against Snatch in the bracket, I definitely would vote Snatch. Don't think they're going to go up against each other in the bracket <laughs> unless it's a playing game. Yeah, I, I, unless somehow I think there's a big Aaron Eckhart. Like Snatch is a popular movie. People like Snatch. Yeah, like, it's, it's going I would agree to do well. But it's like when we talk about the '90s, is like Pulp Fiction on the list? No, no. And I would say no. that Snatch falls more under that category of a movie that's funny. Whereas Thank You for Smoking, again, this is like you saying Almost Famous is a comedy. It's not. Like, Thank You for Smoking is a comedy. Snatch isn't a comedy. It's just funny. That's true. Sure. So. Well, I mean, there's, there's, we, we might have to get to semantics to get down to 64. So it's something to keep in mind. Well, we're going to put this on ice for now. We have talked ourselves into the movies that have made, we've whittled down the short list into the movies that are eligible for the bracket. We've identified some that are most definitely going to be in, and then it's up to me to figure out the rest and put them into bracket form. The next time that you see the movie bracket breakdown, it will be a whittling down of the 1990s movies list. And then after that, you will get to the overall bracket when I do the release show. So thank you guys for being on. Gary, who do you have as your winner from the 2000s, do you think? I think it's going to be Anchorman or Superbad. Uh, I would lean 
super bad in my heart, but I think Anchorman ends up winning. All right. Uh, who would you have emerging victorious from the 2000s? Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. That is not my name. I think that Anchorman or The Hangover are going to win. Were those the? And I think that will be the final. And if I had to vote, I would vote for Anchorman. But uh, I could, it could go really either way. You ask me tomorrow, maybe I'd vote for The Hangover. I think those are the two. Yeah, I, 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 we did say that Hangover is going to be one of the four seeds. I think it's the least funny of all the four seeds. I could see it's probably going to be Anchorman, but I could see Borat putting up a pretty good run when it comes sure. down to it. Yeah. It yeah, it's like Kansas. It doesn't usually win, but, uh, you know, it's a team that's going to vie for a Final Four all the time. And then you're going to have maybe that there's just a lot more love for 40-year-old Virgin or Old School or one of those movies than maybe we think. I could see Old School making a run. I think there is a, a certain sect of the generation that really, really loves that movie. And it's like you said, it kind of kicked this whole thing off. So uh, it's got a certain class to it. Yeah. And I feel like if Zoolander 2 never came out, there'd be more love for Zoolander. Man, Zoolander. Uh, Zoolander like I was kind of saying with Zombieland, the great thing about Zoolander 2 is it's just like 85 minute movie. It just is, gets in and gets out. You say Zoolander 2 or the original Zoolander? No, Zoolander, the original. It yeah, just, it's a very quick movie. It's, yeah, it's a Clint Eastwood funny approach. scene, funny scene, funny scene, over. Yeah, Zoolander 2 has zero funny scenes. Yeah, it's it's not not a good movie. It's really, no. it's really bad. But Bad Santa 2 doesn't prevent Bad Santa from being funny. No, but I don't think anyone saw Bad Santa 2. I did. Opening night. Was I it, stood in line. Were you, were you the only person in the theater when that was? No, showing? no, I wasn't. There was like dozens of us. <laughs> so, so it was you and the rest of the people wearing cutoffs. Yeah, I felt, like, uh, I felt like, I felt like, was who was Tom Hank, uh, Tom Petty's character again from King of the Hill? Lucky. Remember when he went to go stand in line for the Brownsville's, uh, you know, concert and got to like seven days early and nobody showed up to buy tickets. That's what it felt like when I went to go see that movie. God, that was like a season seven King of the Hill reference. That's a deep pull. Gary, and if there's one movie from the back end of this bracket, which you think gains a lot of momentum and starts knocking off some of the big names, like Super Troopers is going to be a favored seed in the first round. It's probably going to be like a three or a four seed. Like I can see yeah. that doing really well. Is there something from the back end you can see doing really well? So I'm trying to think. Like I feel like a lot of the movies I thought might have been not necessarily like a four or a five seed. Like I thought role models was maybe going to be like a nine and that could go on a run. Uh, I, I was thinking hot rod would be like a seven and we go on a run, but we kind of have consensus on those being a little bit higher. Um, trying to think. I just feel bad that best in show and a mighty wind might be first round upsets because people haven't seen them. That's probably going to happen, but that's, that's just something I think we kind of accept at this point. Um, I don't know, like maybe we put the room in at like 11 and people just love the room. Like, especially considering this is going to be all taking place on like Twitter polls. Uh, Twitter loves the room. People who use Twitter and people who watch and like the room are it, it, the Venn diagram is basically just a circle. So, so, so what, what you say, like people who like the room versus so like room with a Twitter account versus the room versus the general population. There's a huge divide. It's like people who love Bernie Sanders. <laughs> sure. It's the Bernie Sanders of movies. Yeah, there, there we go. All right. Thank you. Completely self-funded too. So there you go. <laughs> this is true. No one knows where the money came from. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you can follow Gary and Thorne on Twitter at Gary and Thorne. You can follow Tim on Twitter at Tim Anderson 87. Me, where the polls will be taking place. That you probably want to follow at the PME on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Check out part one to the show in the description of the podcast in video. Parts three and four about the 90s will be coming out next. So stay tuned for those if you want to get into a draw for $100, which will allow you to keep track of when all the new shows come out. You can do that by subscribing to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, leaving a five-star review, DraftKings handle, and something you like about this show, and you will be in that draw for 100 DraftKings dollars. Thank you all for watching. Share the show around. Make sure to remember to vote when the polling actually comes out. That's why you got to follow me on Twitter. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!